Hello, welcome to Dice Versa. My name is Nick, and I'm going to be the GM for this first campaign. We're going to be playing some Starfinder. Specifically, we're going to be playing the Aeon Throne Adventure Path. Uh, we're mostly going to be sticking to the Adventure Path, but we might take some detours here and there to, you know, explore some character backstories or do some character development. But for the most part, we will be sticking to the Adventure Path as it's written. I've slightly modified a few things in the module on Roll20, just mostly adding some extra art here and there, that sort of stuff, to give a little bit more of a sense of place. But without further ado, I think we should just get into it and meet our players. I'm joined by three of my good friends today. Yeah! Tony, since you jumped in, why don't you introduce yourself first? Uh, hello, I am Tony. Not sure why I said that with an accent. Um, but yeah, I'm a good friend of Nick's. Uh, we were working together at Jam City for a while. I'm still there, currently working as a, an associate game designer. And I've been playing RPGs for several years. And, and we've I'm, tried to do Roll20 before. <laughs> and To do Dice Versa before. <laughs> yes, that, that's what I meant. And uh, yeah, here we are again, doing it again. Hopefully this time it'll stick. Third time's a charm, baby. That's right. Or fourth or whatever version this is. Yeah. But uh, another one who was with us on those failed attempts is Chris. Hey, Chris. Hello, it me. I'm Chris Magoon. I am a game designer and avid tabletop game player. I'm excited for this because I'm I'm usually the DM, rarely the player. So this is an opportunity for me to be a player. Yeah, I'm also usually the GM. And hey, look, I still am. And last but not least, uh, the newcomer, the newbie in this group, at least, is... Eric. I'm Eric. I've been playing video games, board games for years and years. Actually, I've done this sort of business a couple times before with some YouTube friends, but uh, I won't pump them out. I want to pump my friends out, these guys. Wow. Big, big guy. Yeah, I said I'm pumping you guys. Okay, wait. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm very excited to not know what I'm doing and be in space. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I think like it's really cool with you joining us now because like honestly, I think one thing that kind of got all of us together as friends is when you started us playing D D at work when we all worked together. That's right. Oh, hey. yeah, that's true. That is and very here true. we are three years later, <laughs> however long it's been. <laughs> that counting <laughs> five through years later. That's right. <laughs> um so yeah, I think that if you guys don't have anything else you want to say about yourselves, we should just get right into the adventure. Let's do it. So, you guys are currently traveling through the Drift. The Drift is a plane of existence, a dimension which allows faster than light travel through the solar system. And you guys have been traveling in this dimension for about six days. You left the main hub of the solar system, Absalom Station, and you're currently on your way to a planet in the Vast, which is very far out in the spiral arms of the galaxy. And you are heading to a planet called Nakondis, where you have a contact there who is setting up a colony or helping set up a colony out there. And you're currently aboard a shuttle called the Sundering Eclipse, and you're freighting some supplies to that colony. And you're going to meet your friend, an android whose name is Sedona, who is awaiting your arrival. Today marks the final day of your travel, and you're expected to arrive at Nakondis within the next hour or two hours or so. So, Chris, we're going to start with you. Your character awakes in their familiar quarters where you've bunked for the last six days. So go ahead and describe your character and your class and your theme and, and just tell us about your character. So my character is Nevesa Voss. She is a human female. She is also a uh, kind of a low level psychic. So at a young age, she was taken in and raised by um, the La Shunta alien race at the, uh, the, the Cabaret University. Uh, to basically kind of train to explore and like utilize her her psychic abilities, which is kind of second nat nature to most Lashunta. So she's kind of trained up to do that, and she uses uh, her 
keen mind in her psychic abilities and uh, became a paranormal investigator. So she uh, is kind of exploring the universe, doing jobs, kind of like investigating the unknown, the mysterious, and the new. And uh, mechanically speaking, her class is an envoy. All right. So she grew up on Castrovel with the Lashunta and, yes. and learned to use her psychic powers there. Yes. Mechanically, that's the like the minor psychic power feat that she has, which allows her to basically just kind of communicate telepathically with people. Um, but I, I plan on kind of doing like some RP stuff, basically her envoy abilities, or even some of like my skill checks with like doing insight to just kind of be a psychic thing as opposed to you know a gut feeling. Sure. Um, cool. But yeah, she is a I in a, in a universe filled with strange aliens and a a team that we knew was going to be filled with strange aliens. I, I wanted to be a normal looking human, so she's a. A woman, dark hair, nice clothes, but not like super fancy. But I kind of like the idea with like the Lashunta. It says that most humans kind of find them unnerving uh, because they're just kind of supernaturally attractive. And I, I, I always kind of like read that as that kind of like being part of like their psychic thing, as they're just kind of like it's almost like psychic pheromones. I think <laughs> okay. from my interpretation of it. So I, I kind okay. of want to play with the idea of even though like Nevesa might be a little bit more plain like still kind of having that Lashunta vibe that people would get just because right. of her, her blatant psychic abilities. Very cool. So she's uh, attractive but uh, mostly like people who who would be attracted to her as here and there's like oh there's something interesting about her. Can't really put a finger on it because it's, yeah. it's in their brain. Sexy telepathy. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, Nevesa, you sit up and you stretch and you get up and you dress yourself and then you head out into the corridor that leads out to the bridge. And as you're walking down this narrow hallway, you trip over something and you look down and you see the tip of a large tail that's covered in scales and it's jutting out from another like crew quarters bunk. And as you peer into that room, you see your crewmate, whose name is Uko Tyrannus Bronte. And that is Eric's character. So Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about Uko? Uko is, what, 10, 15 feet tall? I can't remember. 10 big feet boy. tall He's a or big something boy. like that. He's a big, big boy. Yes, 10 feet tall, gray, silverish, uh, scale skin. Oh, yeah, right. Dragonkin, male. Uh, <laughs> Dragon King soldier. Fact, yeah. yeah, this is important to know about him. Um, of the dragon blood theme. Dragon Kin hailing from the planet of Tyraxis? Triaxis. Triaxis. Yes. Where That's the Dragon Kin, that is, yeah, the, uh, the dominant race on that planet. Basically, a dragon person without a tail. Oh, but you do have a tail. I just I said do you have, have a, tail. a tail. You just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did that was the first pod. thing we learned about. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I, I guess I have a tail. <laughs> uh, no, Uko Tyrannus Bronte. Yes, yeah, silver, gray mostly. Um, big guy, strong, very, very, very. Very strong, like and really tough. Like inverse correlation with your intellect, right? Uh, yeah, he's the, the average. You know, like a flat ten. Okay, <laughs> he's All right. not. You did dumb. okay in school. Yeah, he passed, but he had his, you know, specialty of hitting things, mm -hmm. and um, he's actually. Not very uh, coordinated uh, or dexterous. I see. He's a little more takes a hit, gives a hit, you know. Gotcha. As you do. So as Navessa is tripping over your tail, what are you doing in, in your crew quarters? Are you sleeping in there? Are you... What, what is Uko doing in his downtime? Okay. <laughs> uh, Uko would probably be... He would be... Trying to do his best to um, learn as much of the job ahead, so see what he could pick up and figure out here and learn on this colony out in uh, where was it? Uh, uh, Nakondis. You caught? Yeah. What was it? Nakondis. Yeah. Uh, there's Nikondis. not too much information 
uh, you can glean from the infosphere as you're searching for anything about Nakondis, you the only thing you find is that Abadar Corp is making a colony on that planet. But other than that, there's very little information about the planet. And as you're looking through this, you feel a thud against your tail. Maybe a little bit painful. Ow! Ukula, what have we said about your tail out in the hall? It's a, it's a bit of a tripping hazard. My apologies. I was uh, caught up in learning nothing on where we're heading, and it has me somewhat on edge. But uh, <clears throat> I will rein my tail in for you, Nevesa. I appreciate it, and we'll most likely learn something there on the job. It's uh, always intriguing going out into the unknown, isn't it? And as you say that, the ship's AI crackles onto the comms, and the ship's AI's name is Cooper. So you hear Cooper's voice. Ahoy, landlubbers! We're approaching our destination of Nakondis. Estimated arrival time, 4 minutes and 53 seconds. All personnel are requested on the main deck in order to assist the pilot. Failure to carry out this protocol will result in increased deck swabbing duties. Thank you, and yar. <laughs> Excellent. <coughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I Sorry, did. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have uh, known. My, my first uh, interaction with that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known, of course. All right, great. <clears throat> well, then, well, then, I uh, suppose we should get going. Sounds like Mishka needs us. Let, let us. let us be off. So you guys walk down this narrow corridor leading to the front of the ship. Uko, you have a little bit of trouble squeezing your large frame past the small cupboard that juts outward into the hallway, but you manage to squeeze by, maybe <laughs> knocking a few things off of the shelf as you squeeze by. But eventually Sorry. you guys reach the bridge, and you see the owner and pilot of the Sundering Eclipse. And he's sitting at the pilot station, he's scanning a couple monitors, and he flips a few switches as you enter, then he turns to face you. Tony, tell us a little bit about your character, Mishka. Yes, I am playing uh, Mishka of the Silver Fur Clan. Mishka is a Vlaka, which is an alien race from the planet of Lajak, or however the hell you say that, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to call it Lajak. Sounds good um, to me. But they're essentially anthropomorphic wolves, winter wolves. So they're big wolf peoples. So imagine Star Wolf. Not Star Fox, he sucks. I can't let you do that, <laughs> Star Fox. But yeah, uh, but the planet of Lajok is a, is a very harsh planet. Uh, it's very cold, so very, very wintry, very lo- lots of tundras and, and dangerous uh, hazards and stuff, including lots of blizzards and storms and stuff. Yeah, he grew up there, essentially. So he's kind of a survivalist. That is like the main thing that they kind of learn on that planet. And for some reason, like two thirds of the Vlaka population are born either blind or deaf. Deaf, deaf, not not deaf. They don't. They're not born dead. But Mishka was lucky enough to be born with both hearing and sight. So in his clan, the Silverfur clan, they refer to them as the gifted, those who are born with both, and they kind of serve as like runners for supplies and the hunting and stuff for the clan, since they have more of their senses and going to the towns he would see the ships and would see the sky the stars where you know without any storms blocking it and he developed a, a desire to to visit space he was able to get a job as a cargo pilot essentially and uh, eventually he you know he tried to take any job he could so he started doing the more dangerous deliveries and essentially Sedona was looking for a pilot to do a dangerous job and she hired him to work for her and gave him the ship that we currently are on. Yeah, I think it's probably a good opportunity for everybody to to get into how they know Sedona, this this android that you all know at this colony where you're heading, how you know her and, and why you're heading there to see her. So Mishka, you... Like you said, you you were hired by her in your past, and you've worked with her, and she asked you to help ferry some extra supplies out to the colony, and uh, you agreed to do so. Yeah, Mishka was very eager to enjoy the thrill of 
flying to, to new and dangerous places. You know, him, him being a kind of a survivor and minor thrill seeker. So yeah, so he was willing to do the jobs that most other cargo pilots were a little more hesitant to. <laughs> sure. Navessa, you, uh, you also have worked with Sedona in your past. She is a retired steward, which is like the space cops, basically. Uh, yeah. Probably just like odd jobs, like helping out with a particularly difficult case. Uh, kind of a lot of inspiration uh, came from Navessa just when I was uh, recently trying to figure out how I wanted to RP her and ended up finding myself watch- re-watching uh, the BBC Sherlock. So I- I'm-, I'm thinking of going a little, little uh, Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock-esque with her. So okay. I, I imagine she kind of had that sort of relationship with Sedona. Any t- anytime there's a, a strange case, let's uh, let's get Navessa in to help out. A consulting detective. Yeah. And why are you heading out all the way out into the vast to meet up with her? Uh, because she specifically asked me for me to come out in settling the n- Nakondis, this mysterious alien thing, crash landed or landed, crash landed. Yeah, it basically showed up near the colony, and it is strange and unexplained, so Sedona th- thought of Nevesa to come uh, check it out. And uh, Uko, her having been a steward, and you as a mercenary, you also have basically worked alongside her in your past, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I took a job a few years ago fighting some uh, invading people, army, whatever. Uh, yeah, one of the mercs that was working alongside me was Sedona. She wasn't really like the other mercs. She was a little, uh, different. In a good way, of course. Uh, she was very professional, kept her cool. Uh, we got along pretty well. She seemed to see that in me as, as well, and, uh, learned she was looking for some Escaped convicts among the forces and whatever, I don't know, it was her job, but I helped her out and uh, eventually we just we just kind of became friends and ass-kicking is the best way to put it. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, but uh, anyway, she uh, she uh, sent me a letter, com, whatever, uh, when it's on the screen, an email, that's what they call it, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, asking me just to... Uh, Pretty much come out here and be the muscle for you two muscle-lacking people. So, here I am. (laughs) Make sure you don't die or whatever. It's dangerous and stuff, so that's what I'm going to do. As a favor, but I heard there's really good pay, too. (laughs) So, Mishka, you, you now turn from your pilot seat to see your crewmates. Ah, you're awake. Welcome. Come, friends. Yeah, um, what exactly do you need me to do up here? I'm, I'm not, uh, not very, I don't, I'm too, uh, too big to fit anyway, so. <laughs> you can fit on the bridge, okay? Stop! No, <laughs> well, well, while Uko's kind of doing this, whatever stammering he's doing, I'm just kind of going straight to wherever I'm supposed to be and kind of setting up however I'm supposed to be helping here. So there's a few different places you could go. There is the captain's seat which is currently vacant because... <laughs> I'll take it! <laughs> Mishka is the pilot, actually, of the ship. Does not captain the ship, per se. Uh, there is also the science officer's seat, as well as the engineering seat. So it's up to you where you would like to sit. I can literally go any of those places, so... <laughs> I will happily... There's Shit. also a gunner seat, which I'll I will take that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're leaving that one open for uh, Uko? Yeah, yeah, I was leaving that one out because I figured Uko would want that one. But yeah, there's captain, engineer, science officer that are currently open for Navessa. And you can you can always switch between them if, if yep. you need to. You are free to swap as you need, but you you can go sit wherever you want for the time being. You can play duck, duck, goose. So is there mechanically a reason for me to choose between any of them? At this point, it is where you, wherever you think Nevesa would find herself drawn to. In that case, um, I, I think the science, okay, science one is probably m- most her bag. All right, it's a station, you know, a, a comp station that has a few monitors nearby showing things like, you know, sensor readouts and and showing you what's on the radar nearby. Mostly just information 
surrounding the ship. And so you sit down there, and uh, Uko, you head over to the gunner seat, which is attached to the the forward mounted coil gun that is uh, <laughs> on the front of the Sundering Eclipse. Nice. And as you guys take your places, a few minutes pass as you are hanging out on the bridge, waiting for you know more instructions from Mishka or from Cooper, the AI. And through the main viewport, you can see the swirling pink fuchsia clouds of color and light that make up the drift. Wow. This is probably a familiar sight to you guys. You've, uh, if you've traveled anywhere through the Pact Worlds, you've been in the drift. So you're familiar with this. And after a few minutes, you hear Cooper's voice ring out again. Land ho! We've arrived at Nekondis. Disengaging thrusters, raising mainsail, dropping anchor, etc. Please stand by. <laughs> <laughs> so another minute passes, and you guys feel the constant vibration of the thrusters that you felt under your feet for six days die away. And now you're just sort of floating silently, uncomfortably still through the drift. And you hear Cooper's voice again. Pilot Mishka, are you prepared to depart the drift and return to the material plane? Yes, thank you, Cooper. Aye, aye. Engaging drift engine. Please stand by. (laughs) (laughs) So you hear the drift engine now begin whirring to life from the back of the ship and after another minute you hear Cooper again Attention all crew, prepare to depart the drift in T minus 5 4, 3 2, 1 Departing drift (laughs) And you feel a sudden violent vibration and your stomachs all collectively jump into your throats And then a moment later, you hear a loud and you're no longer surrounded by the swirling clouds of the drift. Instead, you see the fuchsia-colored planet of Nakondis floating in the inky blackness of space. Almost immediately, as you guys reappear into the material plane, you hear a klaxon begin sounding throughout the ship, and you hear Cooper. Alert! Alert! Hostile scallywags detected! All crew are advised to take up battle stations, lest ye be wishing for a vacuum grave, me hearties. Hostiles? Why is there hostiles here? And you see the main viewport switch to the rear feed of the ship and you see two small crafts flanking the Sundering Eclipse and they close in rapidly and let off a volley of laser blasts that narrowly miss your ship. We know these things are hostile immediately. They basically opened fire on you as soon as you came out of the drift. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, can I do, like, evasive maneuvers? You can evade. To perform this stunt, you must make a piloting check. The DC is going to be 12. Then I should be fine as long as I don't roll a 1. Hey, Hey. there we go, baby. That's a 27. Like, as soon as I see this one kind of, like, flying at us, Misha's going to, like, make a hard turn and try to swoop around so that we're not in front of their guns. (laughs) This other small ship sees you maneuver around and it moves to try to cut you off. And that brings us to our science officer phase. Going into action, I think uh, Nevesa's kind of keeping cool and collected and she kind of begins going at the computers like, let's see what we can learn about our new friends here. Engaging the short range scanners. And so I would like to try and scan the nearby shippy. Your computer's check is going to be a DC 12. With that nine, you glean nothing. 
So that was me. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in danger. The other ship that you outmaneuvered does not fire as it tries to wheel back around and get you back in its own firing arc. Uko looks over from the gunner's seat to Mishka and says, So are you, do you want me to shoot them or not? Because you kind of need to point me at them. <laughs> Calm down, I will get you there. And that's my turn. <laughs> Strong start, everybody. <laughs> We're doing great. <laughs> The second ship that moved after you did uh, has you in its sights and lets loose a volley. These laser blasts skim past you. You see them fly past the main viewport camera feeds, but none of them find their mark. The initial ship that moved first, it moves uh, away from you and then it you see it burn its jets hard and it does like a 180 flip to turn back at you. Oh, spicy. Six stunts, bro. And the other ship continues its path on towards you, making a flyby maneuver. So it basically swoops past you, firing as it goes. I want to try that. I want to try a flyby on this jabroni down here. So your DC is going to be uh, 22. That is a 27. Seeing this guy pass and then do a you know hard flip, I'm going to counter with my own flip and fly past him and uh, give Uko some open shots on this guy. Thank you. Okay. Science officer, what would you like to do? So as, as I guess we're kind of like doing a flyby, Basically, kind of like just uh, use, using the targeting systems to try and kind of lock on to uh, trying to lock on to their engines. That's going to be a 17 DC 17 computers check. All right. You got this computer. Nope. <laughs> That's a 12. That's not going to do it. Which brings us to our gunnery phases. The initial ship cannot open fire on you because you... You, you maneuvered around behind it. However, the one that did a flyby on you is going to take that attack on you now. Six damage to your port shields. Damage to the port side shields. All right, go ahead and make your gunnery check now, Uko. Would I roll a 10? You miss. Shit! <laughs> I did my best. All right, and that brings us back to the engineer phase. Um, yeah, so I'm going to jump jump over to the engineering seat, diverting power to the port side shield, and I roll an engineering check. Which is going to be a DC 12. Oh, yeah, I got a 19 on die. That's a total of 25. Port side shield's at 90%. Thank you, Navessa. The ship that swooped past you and opened fire is going to make a hard bank back towards you. Mishka is going to try and take some uh, more evasive maneuvers. That's just another piloting check, correct? Yep, DC 12. 17. Uh, yeah, just, I see this one coming at us. I'm going to just like fly forward for a little bit and then just kind of swoop around and turn it around to do like a little quick turn. So making like a hairpin turn almost. Yeah. Lighting you up, Uko. Take the shot. The other ship will continue its its own pursuit towards you, also turning to line up a shot on you. Uko, please take your shot. Uh, hey, G Cooper, help me out. Aye, aye, Gunner. He doesn't know your name. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. I've been here almost a week. <laughs> uh, that is a 16 to hit. You do indeed hit the ship for 10 damage. As you fire, you do not see any shields flare, and it just takes 10 damage straight to the hull. You see some some smoldering smoke billowing off of it. Hey, it looks like they, uh, they don't have any shields or something. And it also opens fire at you. You took evasive maneuvers, however, not evasive enough as you take five damage to your forward shields. Forward shields down to 50%. Thank you, Navis. Diverting power to the forward shields. Just gonna do that thing again. All right. 
And I got a 13 on die. That is a 19. I believe my target number was 17. Uh, Your target number was, in fact, 12. So 19 will definitely do it. Nice. The one that you guys just shot tries to make a flyby uh, against you. However, you see it coming and you open fire on it. 14 attack. (laughs) So you fire as this ship tries to make a flyby attack on you, but you also just barely miss. Damn it! It's all right, friend. You can try again next time. Meanwhile, the other one makes its own flyby maneuver on you. Going to try to evade again. Okay. DC 12. Uh, 20. All right, gonna make a big O U U turn. The one that did a flyby is going to now roll its attack, missing you completely as you make this evasive U-turn and align your weapon on this other ship that is in bad shape. Go ahead and make your attack roll again, Uko. All right, this time I'm going to do it and you're going to die. That was a little aggressive and I apologize. I was about a nine. Oh, no. (laughs) That (laughs) misses. Dang (laughs) it. I'm actually going to hop out of the engineering chair and continuing my game of musical chairs, I'm going to go over to the captain's seat. (laughs) Okay. And the captain can act on any phase. I plan on acting when Uko goes. Thanks. Uko Doki. Aha! (laughs) <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> so the one that swooped past you and missed its attack will try to remaneuver itself back in line. And the other is going to fly away from you. Like the other one, you see it burn its engines and uh, immediately flips in place back to face you again. So they're facing me right now? Or facing yes, us? Yes, they are both facing you in your forward arc right now. I'm gonna take more evasive maneuvers. Look. It's a DC 12. 18. Going to fly forward past these guys and then I'm gonna flip the bird around. Gonna flip in the bird? Alright, so neither of them have a shot on you at this point. Captain, would you like to jump in? Uh, yes, I would like to encourage Uko. It's like, come on, Uko, you got this. Take the shot. Uh, And I'm going to use a diplomacy. DC 16. Oh, no. That's a one. Oh, no. no. (laughs) You don't tell me what to do. (laughs) You're going to, instead of taking a plus two, you're going to take a negative one on your gunnery check now. Uh, no. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, it sounds about right. You're not my captain. (laughs) You're not my mom. (laughs) If you miss, I hope that you miss by one. (laughs) No. (laughs) No, that's a nine with the minus one. And that definitely misses. (laughs) As you turn, look over your shoulder to see what uh, Navessa is saying to you. Don't distract me. The the gun gets pulled slightly off center and (laughs) the shot goes wide. Cooper, carry your weight. Come on. Yar, you're not the boss of me. (laughs) 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 You're not my captain. Cooper, come on. You're not my boss. (laughs) The one that you just shot at flies forward and makes a swooping turn back to face you again. Mishka is gonna fly at this guy, almost trying to play chicken, and then uh, he's gonna fly behind this guy. So yeah, so I'm uh, more and more evasive maneuvers. Okay. 28. That'll do it. And the other ship is going to just fly forward, making a wide turn to basically get the flank on you. I think I just want to, like, reflavor the encourage action as just me psychically implanting the idea in Uko's mind to shoot better. (laughs) Okay. I think I'm gonna shoot better this time. Whoa, whoa, whoa! (laughs) You feel a surge... Oh, well, let's see. Make your roll. (laughs) Yeah. There we go. You feel a surge of confidence (laughs) as... You line up your shot. That's a, let's see, with an additional plus two, we're looking at 15. As you come up right on this 
ships aft. You open fire with your coil it's gun. pronounced ass. Blowing it to smithereens. Yeah! I got one! Ooh, where's the other? Uh, wait. Oh. There you go, friend. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mishka. Uh, who are we shooting? Do we even know? Cooper, is there anything you can tell us? Yeah, my systems be all preoccupied by the fight. The second ship opens fire, missing. All right. Well, then I, I will. I will switch back over to the the science officer seat since uh, people are curious to know who these are going at us. The remaining ship is going to attempt another flyby on you. So DC twenty two. Oh my god! I rolled a twenty one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it makes a a flyby pass on you, narrowly missing. Uh, you see your shields flare, but they don't take any damage. And Uko, you can make your free attack. That's a 12. That is not going to hit. Dang it. As it flies past, Mishka just kind of barrel rolls around, does a couple of little windy spins and turns to essentially just kind of pull up right next to the other ship to try and get Uko as close a shot as possible. I don't need your help. <laughs> Sides officer. Well, if you don't need anybody's help, <laughs> Koopa, help me scan the, uh, the enemy ship. Figure out what we're up against here. Aye, aye, Captain. Or Science Officer. <laughs> 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 All right, well, I'm afraid to roll computers again, but let's do it. It is a DC 12. You rolled a 16. So Cooper says, Yar, There's nobody aboard them ships. Them's is tiny with a speed of 12 and a racer drone body. A perfect maneuverability. How does he know all this? <laughs> so the, there's nobody piloting those. Are they drones then? Aye, that seems like a right possibility. Hmm. All right. And gunnery phase. You're going to die, clown. What is a clown? I don't know. I heard it back on my home planet fire. How about a seven? Uh, <laughs> you get point blank up in this thing's face and open fire, but it it like is directly in between the two laser beams as you fire. <laughs> oh, come it on. does not take any damage. <laughs> now you're too close, Mishka. Engineering phase. Back to the captain's seat. Okie dokie. I have three jobs on this ship. They're stupid, but I'm going to do all of them. <laughs> the ship continues its onslaught against you, making another flyby maneuver. But it fails its piloting check, and Uko, you get another attack of opportunity on it. Come on, come on. 18! Ooh. 12 damage. <laughs> you get frustrated. Ah, come on! You do Marcus Phoenix. <laughs> and you take another pot shot at it, this time connecting. And making it dead. Good game, everyone. Good game. Not yep. quite. Damn it is out. definitely smoldering. Bits of its hull are left behind as it continues flying, but it is still, still moving. Mishka is going to evade again. Just in case. 15. <laughs> I think so succeeds, right? Yep, that is a success. Your DC is 12. Do another little U-turn real quick and get that ship in our sights. All right, it's going to take its flyby attack on you. You get a plus two to your AC, which is good because it does not hit. And now Uko. You got it, Uko. Oh, Captain. And Captain. Cooper, switch computers over to targeting. Help, help out Uko. Come on, Uko. Let, let's finish this off right here. I'm going to try another encourage action. That's a two on die. So a 15. I think the target was 16 before, right? 16. <laughs> <laughs> no close. 16 is the target. So that 15 is not going to do it. Shut up. Stop it. I'm trying to focus. Cooper says, I let's sink this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper. Language. Fucking computer. 17! 11 damage! And you make this ship into smoldering rubble as well. <laughs> a good fight. A good battle. Good job, friend. Now what? Now we got down to safety on the, to the planet, hopefully. Hopefully no more drones. 
Do we know who sent those drones? Yeah, I, w- I would like to go back to the science officer's chair and kind of begin going through, like, what we scan from the computers, see if there are any kind of, like, identifying markers or any sort of, like, alien tech that we would recognize. Okay. Um, so since you're not in combat, you can, like, take your time now to, to really do a proper scan with your sensors. So go ahead and make a computer's check, and we'll see how you do. That's a five on die, so eleven. Using the ship scanners, you give them a thorough scan, and you do not really detect much on board. There is no sign of life. The technology in general is fairly basic. It seems that these are fairly basic combat drones that have been deployed here. Other than that, you can't really discern too much. No identifying markers. No identifying tech. Uh, There's nothing that can really trace this back to anything. They seem to be just uh, average drones. Um, So what we've gathered then is... What we have here is that we've shot down our own people's drones that maybe perhaps misidentified us as a pirate vessel. Or... Why would they do that? Trouble. Uh, I don't know computers. I mean, ours isn't able to pick up who or what they are. Why couldn't theirs? Cooper... I get the sense that they were just attacking anything anything that got within range, perhaps as just an automatic defensive mechanism. But belonging to who? Well, I don't think it would be belonging to our acquaintances here, because they know that we're coming. They were, We were expected. There's only one way to find out. Let's go find out. All right, so I guess uh, Mishka will bring us down to our destination. Try to get to the colony. You make your approach descending through Nakondas' atmosphere and you skim above some uh, dense forests that cover the planet's surface. And through a thick layer of fog, you can see that the tops of the trees, they look like pine trees and they have needles just like a pine tree, but they have a pinkish hue to them instead of green. And as you make your way to the coordinates of Madelon's Landing, the name of the colony where you're to meet Sedona, you find that the entire colony is shrouded in fog so dense that you can't actually see through it. However, the ship scanners sort of reconstruct a wireframe model of the planet's surface as you are flying over it. And you can see that the colony is situated in a large clearing, and it's all centered around this very large structure in the center of it. You also pick up some life forms on your sensors, most of which appear to be human. Unfortunately, as you are over the colony, you don't really see anywhere to land. Time to drop! Jumps out of the ship. (laughs) Bye, Uko. Take 20d6 falling damage. Uh, I have wings. (laughs) Nevesa, can I please get another computer's check from you? Of course you can. Kind of anticipating, like, you know, Mishka trying to find somewhere to land. Looking for a landing spot right now, Mishka. Help this time, Cooper. God. Yar, I'm doing me best. That is a dirty 20. So with that, you can identify that large structure in the center of the colony as a prefabricated building. And it's sort of incongruous with the rest of the buildings. It looks more like a fortress than the other colony structures. And you can actually see two large cannons affixed to its roof. And Cooper says, Pilot Mishker, I found multiple potential landing zones within five miles of Pact World Colony Madelon's Landing. Uploading coordinates to your station now. And indeed, you do receive three sets of coordinates, all within a few miles of the colony, and each is in a clearing in the forest that's large enough to land your ship. I'll pick the closest one and park us there. So a few moments later, the Sundering Eclipse touches ground on Nakondas, and Cooper says, We have made port in Nakondas, 3.44 miles east of Pact World Colony, Madelon's Landing. 
Atmospheric readings indicate a breathable atmosphere with a temperature of 85 degrees and a humidity level of 47%. Ew. <laughs> Thank you, Cooper. All right, let's uh, make our way to the to the colony, friends. 